Hey guys, welcome back to another Stardew Valley video. It's your girl Fuzz and I decided that it might be nice to consider making a video on those that are picking up Stardew Valley for the first time. There are so many things that you can do in Stardew Valley and sometimes as your first playthrough this might be overwhelming. Never fear, I've decided to collect some tips and tricks that I've suggested in my videos previously as well as some other tips that you might want to consider if this is your first time playing Stardew Valley. Let's get into it. Also as a little note, I've started up a Patreon so if you want to support the channel as little as a dollar per month, I'll leave the link in the description below. Let's start off with spring which is the first season you start off in. The game directs you to plant some parsnips. Farming will be very important at the beginning, especially since it is a farming game. Consider using your energy planting your given parsnips and buying other seeds from Pierre, who runs a general store in the town center. It might be difficult to consider what seeds are the best to pick. Cauliflower and kale are a definite good pick, but there is no wrong seeds to pick. Your energy will deplete when completing actions such as preparing the crop space for your seeds, so be sure not to use too much of it just on crops. After planting, you'll need to water these crops daily, if it isn't raining that is. Try to consider to roam around Pelican Town with half energy if possible to allow you to use your energy for other things that you might want to use it for. Every item that you collect at the start will be useful in some way, shape or form, so be sure to craft chests through your crafting menu for 50 wood to keep your items within them. So what is there to do at the beginning if you've already done your farming for the day and you've collected some decent items? Definitely do a lot of fishing and a lot of mining. The mines northeast of Pelican Town unlock at day 5. Mining within the mines will reward you with a lot of useful items that you can use on your farm. Whilst fishing, which is unlocked at day 2 when Willy is returned from his trip and rewards you with a fishing rod, will allow you to fish in any body of water for some great early money. Both money and material go hand in hand for usefulness throughout your playthrough. Quick tip, if you find some bubbles appearing on the water whilst fishing, consider throwing your line in here. The bite rate of fishes is increased here, which helps speed up the time of fishing. Another tip is try not to sleep early, especially if your energy gets really low. It might be easy to consider sleeping for the day when your energy gets low, but it's actually better to try and stay awake for as long as you can. If you have any food on you, whether it's eating a crop, crafting some field snacks after reaching foraging level 1, or buying some food from the saloon in the middle of the store, use these frequently to keep yourself awake for longer. Your character will pass out at 2am, so consider sleeping later in the night. After some time, the community center will be a task you may want to complete. You can either consider completing the community center or you can complete the Jojama program instead. Both will reward you with the same big rewards such as the rebuilding of the greenhouse on your farm or fixing the minecarts. But just know that the community center has little bundles to complete and each bundle will have a little reward to reward you with. The Jojama will only ask for a free to complete these big rewards and that's it. The Jojama program can be started at any point after discovering the community center's first bundle. However, you won't be able to go vice versa and complete the community center after accepting the Jojama's program. If you like foraging, spring is a great season to go around and collect some forageables. Only in spring will spring onions appear on the ground in Zenesat Forest, which is the forest south of your farm. Forage here often, as these forageables are good to sell or to use as food. Likewise, from the 15th to the 17th of spring, salmon berries will appear on bushes all around Pelican Town, so consider picking these up as well. Also, there is a television within your house and you will want to check it every morning. There are some great channels to help you along your adventure. There is the weather report which will tell you the weather for the next day. The fortune teller will tell you your luck for the day as lucky days are better than non-lucky days. Living off the land on Mondays and Thursdays will give you some great early tips on farming, fishing, foraging and town life. And the queen of the source which appears on Sundays and their reruns on Wednesdays that will teach you some great food recipes. Now off to summer, my favorite season. You should have a decent amount of money after selling your fishes and some of your crops. So consider buying a lot of seeds, but again, not too many that'll drain your energy. Quick tip, your energy bar can be used even after your character says that they're exhausted. However, just be sure not to get your energy to zero as then your character will walk around exhausted. Crops will be your main source of income in your first year, so sprinklers will definitely be your best friend. You'll receive the recipe to craft sprinklers at level 2 of farming, so hopefully you've leveled up to craft these. These will only reach a 4 crop area around the sprinkler, so craft a decent amount of them to help reduce the time and energy of watering your crops daily. 
quick tip during your playthrough you should notice an exclamation mark on the top right hand side here you will find tasks that you can complete and completing these will reward you with gold and sometimes items earlier tasks give you a decent amount of money so consider completing these as early as possible if you haven't seen it yet you can actually upgrade your backpack at pierre's general store for only 2000 gold for your first upgrade you'll be able to gain an extra row of space consider buying this as early as possible especially if you're finding yourself running out of room do consider after a bag upgrade to get down as far as you can throughout the mines the further down you travel the greater the items become a good goal is to try to reach five levels every time you enter the mine so hopefully getting to level 80 by the end of summer is doable quick tip cave carrots and cherry bombs can be found frequently in the mines consider using these often in the mines cave carrots are a great food resource whereas cherry bombs or any other bombs for that reason are great to clear rocks to help you descend quicker better bombs can be crafted at certain mining levels if you're looking for some easy money as well help wanted quests can be found at the front of ps general store pelican town residents will sometimes put up a help wanted quest and when completed will reward you with some gold Plus, when completing these, which you can track in your to-do list over at the exclamation mark, will increase your friendship level with that villager. Friendship levels can be increased with all villagers and they will reward you with items and recipes at certain friendship points, as well as providing cutscenes so you can get to know your villagers better. We're off to fall and hopefully you've considered to build a coop and a barn on your farm. Robin runs a carpenter shop off into the mountains at the northwest side of Pelican Town and she builds some really useful buildings, whilst also providing some house upgrades for your farmhouse and provides some items that you may want to buy for your farm. Having a coop in a barn after buying a silo is great to house yourself some animals. So consider purchasing these if you haven't done so yet. The silo will hold hay for you, which can either be collected by using your scythe on the tall grass on your farm, or by buying it at Miney's Ranch in Sinisat Forest. Your farm might still look a little wild if you haven't tried clearing it, so consider collecting some wood and stone by clearing your farm a little bit. It doesn't need to be fully cleared though, just clear however much of the farm is comfortable for you and use that space available for either new buildings through Robin or to place some machines down. Preserve jars, furnaces and bee houses are all very useful early games so be sure to have quite a few placed down. As for which buildings are useful, after placing down a silo, a coop and a barn, consider placing down a pond so you can farm some fishes. Or a stable that comes with a horse so you can travel around Pelican Town quicker. Also be sure to be consistent with your crops. Hopefully you've unlocked the quality sprinkler recipe which is unlocked at level 6 of farming as they water 8 crops around them. Also, just like in spring, blackberries can be found on bushes between the 8th to the 11th of fall so consider picking these up for food and to sell. Also, whichever you've chosen to go with, be sure to clear as much of the community center or Georgia Mart program as you can. The boiler room or minecart unlock will assist with traveling between places in Pelican Town which saves you time. Also, you should have encountered a cutscene when walking into town for the special orders board if you have the 1.5 update. These quests might be difficult to complete in your first playthrough, but if you believe you can complete them within the time limit, then consider accepting these. The recipes received from certain Pelican Town residents become super useful throughout your playthrough. These are reset every Monday, so don't worry if these are quests that you prefer not to complete at this time. Some quests are seasonal pacific like Evelyn's special order gifts for George, so you'll need to wait for certain seasons to be able to complete these quests. Lastly, we have winter which might be difficult for your first time. If you haven't been able to rebuild the greenhouse yet, there are no crops that you can plant in winter except for winter seeds, which is a craftable when reaching level 7 of foraging and uses winter forageables to craft, placing down standard tree seeds and placing tree fertilizers on top of them which is also obtained at level 7 of foraging, and fiber seeds which are received as a recipe after completing Linus' special orders request. Prioritize upgrading your tools in winter at Clint's Blacksmith which is located at the east side of Pelican Town. These can be upgraded at any time but tools like watering cans and hose may be useful for your crops during the other seasons. Definitely use winter to upgrade any tools that haven't been fully upgraded as upgrades will improve the tools practicality such as the watering cans reach when charged or the decrease of axe hits on a tree. If you've unlocked the bus repair, why not consider exploring Skull Cavern which can be found in Calico Desert which is the only destination the bus takes you. Now be prepared, Skull Cavern can be quite daunting with its difficulty so you'll want to make sure that you have the right tools with you. I have a useful video that provides some tips for anyone who wants to go through Skull Cavern. I'll link it in the annotations above in the description below. 
Also in Calico Desert, there's the Oasis, where you'll find Sandy that runs a store and sells some pretty cool items. Likewise, the Desert Trader to the east side of Calico Desert also has some cool items, but will only trade you items instead of gold. Be sure to check them out every time you're at Calico Desert, as they have permanent stock as well as rotating stock depending on the day. You might also want to consider filling up the museum, which is just below Clint's blacksmith store. Items that say Gunther can tell you more about this means it can be handed in and at certain amount of items handed in, you'll be rewarded with items to use on your farm. Be sure to hand in often as at 60 items being handed in, Gunther will reward you with a key to unlock the sewers, which I'll keep a secret to those who haven't discovered what's inside of it yet. At this point, you should have a whole bunch of items collected on your adventures. Consider selling some items, but always keep a few in a chest, especially gems found in the mines. This will help you increase your gold throughout winter to prepare you for crops when spring comes along. Be sure to also clear your farm to prepare yourself for some crop spaces when spring comes along. And these are just a few tips that I can suggest to those who are trying their first playthrough in Stardew Valley. As always guys, I hope to see you next time. Take care.